Hi there. Today we're talking about the Australian Freedom Alliance. Some of you guys might have noticed that there's been a petition circulating around recently in response to our Premier here in Victoria, Dan Andrews, announcing that the state of emergency powers that are currently available to him uh, may need to be extended by the Parliament for up to 12 months in response to the coronavirus crisis. Basically, the conservative side of politics lost their collective shits about this. Now, the legislation would need to pass the Victorian Parliament, the lower house, which is controlled by Labor, presumably would be able to pass it through just fine. Um, but the upper house would need the um, sign off of a few cross benches. So I'm sure they're working on that at the moment. It's not to extend the state of emergency for 12 months. It's to give the state the ability to extend it for another 12 months. Now, Victoria is pretty limited in this. That's why none of the other states are having these issues is because their current legislative framework allows for the state of emergency to be extended as required. But Victoria's, for whatever reason, uh, does not. So every four weeks, the state of emergency would still need to be renewed between now and then. It just gives the Victorian government an additional 12 months of runway to be able to do that, if need be. And that's an important caveat because there's no one suggesting that it should go for 12 months or that it would need to go for 12 months. Dan Andrews himself has said that he prefers that it doesn't go on for 12 months unless it absolutely has to. But it's putting the power in place to make sure that if and when such a time is necessary as to extend it, they can. And all the indications are this whole COVID crisis isn't going to go away by the middle of September. So they're going to need to extend it somewhat. I think the problem with all of this is that Dan Andrews is trying really hard to do good government and we live in a media environment and a social media environment that doesn't really give you brownie points for that. You've got a situation where you're going up, you're getting in front of the cameras, answering everyone's questions at a press conference until they have no more questions every day for the last 50 days in a row because that's good government. I expect my leaders to do that in a time of crisis, to front up, answer everyone's questions. But the problem with that is all it does is give members of the press and the public the ammunition that they might need to have a go at you if that's what they're inclined on doing in the first place. It opens you up for political liability. So rather than just like quietly pass this in the background like a bunch of other leaders might have done, um, Dan Andrews has fronted up, explained the reasons why they're doing this and did a very long detailed Facebook post about it as well. So as I said, the conservative side of politics lost their fucking minds. And we've seen a petition circulating recently from the Australian Freedom Alliance that takes issue with this extension of powers. And it's notable for a number of reasons because the plea is basically to the governor of Victoria, um, who would need to sign off on the law in order for it to be ratified, I guess, basically saying, even if this does pass both houses of parliament and goes through a democratic process, we want you to subvert democracy and not allow it to pass which I love these, uh, you know, freedom loving democracy junkies that just like want to straight hit the constitution to be fucking veins are uh, telling the governor, like, don't listen to the democratic process, which allows these things to change. We want you to ignore it. There's no irony involved there whatsoever. That's fine. That makes perfect sense. Anyway, there's a number of falsehoods in this document, which has cropped up. And as of time of recording has 32,410 submissions. I don't know if people are submitting multiple versions of this petition or what, but certainly it's uh, it's more than none, which is what it should be. So it starts off very official looking. On the 16th of March, 2020, the Victorian Minister for Health declared a state of emergency under section 198 of the Public Health and Wellbeing Act 2008, parentheses, the act, on the grounds that COVID-19 posed a serious risk to public health, defined in section three of the act to mean, blah, 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 and, so far, all of this is true. This this wording is taken out of the act. I double checked it. Um, that is all correct. But just because you put the act in quotation marks and brackets and it all looks very legal and official and you got the numbered dot points doesn't mean that anything contained within it is factual or serious. I would encourage you to do a little bit of thinking about each one of these things. We're going to point out some of the things that are untrue. 
or hyperbole. The measures include curfews, quarantines, lockdowns, mandatory face coverings, business and border closures, and various denials of fundamental human rights. Yes, uh, uh, the fundamental human rights of being able to go down to the pub and <laughs> work at an office. These are all fundamental. I mean, you could forgive them for that. That is maybe just a bit of hyperbole. It does seem like all of these restrictions are fair given the circumstances and have contributed to what, you know, Australia's place in the world as being one of the best in regards to coronavirus, but we'll push on. The state of emergency declaration having been extended on several occasions is due to expire by the 15th of September, 2020 under the six month sunset enshrined in the act. Nevertheless, on the 24th of August, Premier Daniel Andrews announced he intends to extend the emergency period for a further 12 months. Not strictly true, for a potential 12 months with four week renewals in between now and then. I strongly oppose and reject any further emergency period. The government is clearly acting beyond the law as it has not, will not, and cannot discharge the burden of showing that there now exists a serious risk to public health as required under the act. So essentially saying everything's fine, COVID's fine, so you can't extend your state of emergency. The government is not acting beyond the law, it is acting within the law, and because this is what they're wanting to do, they are engaging in the democratic process of creating and passing legislation, which is literally their job and what we elected them to do, in order to make sure that this process is in fact legal. And is in line with other states that don't need to go about extending this state of emergency because their legislative framework already has it extended. Scrolling further down, COVID is no more serious than the annual flu. No, that's false. I'm sorry, it, it is. It's more infectious and it's more deadly than the flu. And if you don't recognize that the 177,000 deaths that have occurred in the United States are not appreciably different because they occurred there as opposed to here, they could easily happen here, then you're just willfully closing your eyes at this point. In Victoria, the current death toll of 415 is more comparable to the state's annual road toll of around 250 than to its annual cancer deaths of around 13,000. Ignoring, conveniently, the fact that we've had an economy melting lockdown, face coverings, uh, all of these things that they outline as being draconian and ridiculous, these are the things which have prevented the infection from spreading. So you can't say there's only been 415 deaths and say that the restrictions that we have in place have been too restrictive. You can't have those two things. You can't make those two arguments at the same time. It is only with the benefit of a united worldwide effort of people locking down, face coverings, face hand washing, all of that stuff that we've been able to achieve a result of only 415 deaths. In reality, if we didn't do those things, it would be significantly more. And this is where it starts getting conspiratorial. Moreover, the COVID figures are likely inflated due to a number of factors, which include the highly intensive testing regime. That's that classic Trump, if you don't test me, you can't find it logic. Presumptive diagnosis, non-disclosure of false positive test results, assumptive reporting of suspect cases, financial incentives, and even instances of multiple counting. I'd like to for you to point those out if and when that they occurred, you know, likelihood is uh, evidence of that is pretty light on the ground because you've just claimed them with no evidence. Um, classic data's being corrupted, Malcolm Roberts ideology going on here. Even if the data was correct, it's incorrect. Oh, I love this bit. Add to this the suppression of discussion and debate by the government and mainstream media. It's sadly, your, the debate has been significantly unsuppressed up until this point. Alan Jones is hopping on Sky News on a regular basis and spouting a bunch of completely irresponsible bullshit and for some reason is still on the air. No one's suppressing this debate, unfortunately. Ba ba ba. Rapid expansion of police powers and surveillance capability, unlawful use of the military, suppression of potentially promising low risk medical treatments. Is he sneaking in some hydroxychloroquine conspiracy theory stuff under that? Is he? Potentially promising low risk medical treatments. Why don't you elaborate Australian Freedom Alliance or Freedom Alliance Australia or the Australian Alliance of Freedoms, whatever your name is, People's Front of Judea and all in anticipation of an unproven vaccine delivered by drug companies who bear no liability. How do you know that this vaccine that doesn't exist yet is no good? Just classic, just a little anti-vaxxer stuff, just slip it in there. I refer your excellency to the lessons from countries like Sweden and Switzerland who have successfully achieved herd immunity without significant loss or the imposition of draconian measures. 
Uh, I love the the use of language here because it all sounds very official, very smart, but what he's claiming is misinformation. Sweden did uh, take a slightly different approach with their coronavirus strategy. They did go for more of a herd immunity model, which is what they called it, um, expecting that basically if you let it rip through the community, you could have a certain number of acceptable deaths, whatever that means. Not acceptable to you if you're the recipient of one, but hey, that's fine. You have a certain number of acceptable deaths and it would rip its way through the community. And by mid-May, you'd have 40% herd immunity and things could go back to normal. Well, that's not what's happened in Sweden. If you look, Sweden's got around 5,700 deaths currently and is heading towards 100,000 coronavirus cases. Now their restrictions are less than ours, um, but there's been a lot of commentary of um, experts in the field debating whether their strategy was better than ours. And I personally don't really think it has been. You know, you're still talking about mandatory mask wearing, working from home, um, people not being allowed to gather in large crowds. If anything, it just sounds like stage two restrictions of what we had earlier on in the process. It doesn't sound like Sweden's a fucking Ibiza free for all. Like that's not what's happening. As such, I urge you to stand against this lawless tyranny Tyranny, we got the tyranny bingo for everyone <laughs> playing, <laughs> for everyone playing sovereign citizen bingo at home. You got your tyranny tile, cross that off. I therefore request your excellency to exercise your prerogative to decline to give royal assent to any bill of parliament that would have the effect of imposing a state of emergency or conferring similar powers beyond the current expiry date of 15th of September, 2020. And then what? That's the question. Say you do win in this fight. Say this government that you want to dissolve works as democracy intends and you get a bunch of petitions signed and they enact your will and there's no state of emergency past September 15th and then the state of Victoria is not able to exercise these additional restrictions and what? What's the plan? Things just snap back to normal and everything's fine? Like what's the plan? What do you think is going to happen when all of those things happen? Like what's your plan? Happy to hear your plan, Australian Freedom Alliance. As long as it's a plan and not nothing. Something which I find really interesting about this is at the end it says provide your mobile if you wish to receive SMS alerts for any urgent actions. But I love the idea that people like, government is this organization that's untrustworthy and can't be trusted with our privacy and personal details and infringements on our freedom. Yeah, I agree with that. So I'm gonna sign this petition and give my first name, last name, home address, postcode, city of residence, and mobile phone number to an organization I've never heard of, which I have no idea how they're going to store and use this information, that's fine. The government jams through a bunch of metadata laws, that's fine. The government needs $270 billion for the military industrial complex for reasons with no justification, no white paper from the military, that's fine. But, the Victorian government wants to extend the state of emergency during an emergency, and that's government tyranny. Okay, all right. So who is the Australian Freedom Alliance? I'm glad you asked that question. There's not a hell of a lot of information on them. From what I can see, there's uh, a very janky website. Get on Squarespace, guys. Seriously, it's not hard. You can tell it's a really high quality website because there's the um, default text from the website set up, it looks like a WordPress website where it tells you what goes into a blog post. Um, helpful industry specific content that one, gives readers a useful takeaway and two, shows you're an industry expert. Um, and there's also a Facebook page, um, which has got some very dubious branding of a man breaking chains, which is just, it's got some, it's got some uncomfortable slavery vibes for, uh, for the modern era, I tell you that much. It's got uh, 300 members and as far as I can tell, this guy, Frank uh, Luchisano and Paul McNally are the moderators of this page. And uh, Frank just seems to be posting a bunch of standard fare seen here, looking super respectful to these women. Um, just classic, you know, anti-vaxxer conspiracy stuff, um, pushing the petition, um, classic just Alan Jones fare. Uh, the open letter about Google, just all, you know, is there, oh, there's a video with Pete Evans. Brilliant. This is all brilliant. Uh, picture uh, on his page about helping people wake up from the COVID thing being Illuminati bullshit. You know, classic sensible stuff. 
And these are the people that are behind Australian Freedom Alliance. Now, who knows who exactly these people are, what their motivations are. It could just be a bunch of idiots that have put together this thing and shared it and now it's just gone viral. But I'm seeing a lot of people, people I know who should be smart people, resharing this and sending it out and putting their name on it and seal of approval. And it's making its way out to, you know, since I found out about this last night, there's been an additional 2000 signatures attached to this thing. And it's really concerning because it's everything that's bad about the internet age, social media, all of this stuff rolled into one. It is the perfect epitome of people mindlessly seeing something comes into their feed and they sign it, share it, send it off. If it was Scott Morrison that was extending a federal state of emergency, it was, if it was their side of politics that was pushing this, there wouldn't be a peep out of these people. You know, when, when the LNP invades people's privacy on a gargantuan level in, in regards to metadata retention, where were these people? Where were the sovereign citizens then? Where were the, you know, break glass in case of tyranny people then? They were nowhere to be found. But it's only because it's Dan Andrews and it's the left side of politics that all of a sudden they're taking a big stand and breaking the chains of oppression. All these white people that have never had a bad thing happen to them are just breaking the chains, breaking the chains of slavery, slavery of the mind. I know it's too much to ask that people Google what a thing is before they sign it and put their name to it and share it. But by God, you have to know by now that things are not what they seem on the internet, you have to trust verified sources. And if there was a good faith discussion about what the expansion of these powers meant, and that discussion was headed by someone like Waleed Ali, that's fair enough. He is a person who is not cynical and can have that discussion. But the fact is, I don't, I, I can't take the breaking chains guy seriously. You are not the person to have this discussion. There is a discussion to be had. Is it a reasonable expansion of police powers? Do we need it? Is it necessary? And that can happen in a good faith manner in a public forum, in, in some kind of panel, you know, you're moderated by, you know, a knowledgeable third party who's unaffiliated. Like that's a discussion we might be able to have. You could make your point in that kind of discussion, but this, this is drivel online petition horseshit. This is how nothing works. All it does is serve to make things more difficult, spruik coronavirus conspiracy theory horseshit, and if anything, make people ignore the directives, not wear a mask, go out, infect other people, case numbers rise, and the whole thing goes on longer. The majority of Victorians, whilst they're not thrilled about what's going on with the lockdown, support the measures that the government is proposing to get through this crisis. We don't want to be America with 177,000 deaths. We don't want to be Italy. The reason the numbers are so low here is because we've worked, the vast majority of Australians and Victorians have worked really hard to make sure it doesn't become that. Do not fall prey to your basest, most animal instincts and just go with your emotion on this. We need to work hard and we need to work together. Otherwise, this is not going to work. Humanity always struggles with collective action. But if you think back to our grandfathers and grandmothers who lived through the Second World War, who pulled together, who bought war bonds, who dimmed their lights during bombing raids, like they worked together and they achieved something great, which was the downfall of fascism. Don't allow yourself to become prey to those that fear, those base bad instincts and become the very fascists that our grandparents were fighting against. Oh, deep breaths. We're gonna get through this guys. You dum-dums with this petition are making it difficult, but we're gonna get through it. We're all gonna get through it together, you sons of bitches. Anyway, would love to hear your comments on this video unless you're one of those petition people, in which case keep it to yourself. Love your faces. See you in the next video. Peace.